God bless you this morning. Thank you so very much for joining us this morning, this Sunday morning, the Lord's Day, March 29th, 2020. We're coming to you this morning with a word from the Lord, but I want to talk to you just a minute about what's going on in the land. We understand that there's a COVID-19, a plague that the enemy has brought against the, the world, but understand that God is greater. We have chosen not to meet in our church in an assembly in that way, as it is not what the government says that we ought to do, but they can't stop us from fellowshipping together as the manner of some is, but so much more as we see the day of our Lord approaching. So what we've chosen to do is record our services from different locations. Individuals are sheltering in place, but that does not stop them from praying and reading the word of the Lord. God blessed us about a year and a half ago to begin a ministry in the city of Tracy. We call it Solid Rock Valley. So from this location, the Valley location, we're going to have individuals attending that location to be able to pray and read scriptures uh, for all of us today. And then we'll come back to a word of the Lord. Everybody you'll notice is going to be in a different location, but we're all with one accord. We're gonna start off with praise and worship going to come in with our prayer, reading of the scriptures, and then we're going to hear from the jewel of the rock, Lady Sheila Ann Simpkins. After she has ministered, we'll have a song, and then of course, it's going to be the word of the law. Today, ministering is going to be Elder Paul Brown, one of the ministers at the Newark location. We appreciate all that you are doing to come and support us. You've given on Givelify, you sent in checks, you sent in cash. We appreciate your support, but we are not going to be stopped. We uh, have, are not going to be halted in our work for the Lord. We are pressing towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I'll come back at the end of this message, but I want you today to enjoy this service with Solid Rock Church of God in Christ. <laughs>
name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for your goodness and for your mercy. We thank you for being God and God all by yourself. There's no other God like you, nowhere, no how. You are the only true and wise God. It is because of you that we have our uprisings in our down city. It's because of you we are able to move through this thing called life. It's because of you we have a roof over our head, clothes on our backs, and food in our belly, and shoes on our feet. It's because of you we have a reasonable portion of our health, and we thank you for that because you are God that keeps his promises. You said you would have no plague even come nigh our dwelling. We thank you for the blessings that you have already bestowed upon us. Now, God, we are living in some difficult times, but you are not the author of fear. God, you have placed in us love and a strong mind and a power and a will to move forward in you. For you are the author and the finisher of our faith, and through you all things are possible, even healing for our families. God, we ask that you touch now those that are sick and shut in. God, that you move right now through those hospital rooms. God, that you touch now in the name of Jesus. God, that you move right now to those jail cells. Touch, heal, and deliver. God, if you deliver them, God, we won't have to worry about them anymore. God, in the name of Jesus, we ask that you sanctify the leaders of this country, God. That you sanctify their mind, God. That you gird up the loins of their mind. That they're thinking soberly. That they're thinking vigilantly. God, that they will not hold their power in a way that will cause harm to those that are in their control. God, we know that you are a God that can save, you are a God that can heal, and you are a God that can deliver. Touch our president right now in the name of Jesus. Touch his cabinet right now in the name of Jesus. For every mayor, every congressman, every governor, God, move on them right now. Restore love, oh God. Restore a sense of unity right now in the name of Jesus. Let them use their power in a way that brings salvation to the country, that will bring healing to the nation, God. For you said in the word that if we turn from our wicked ways, that you would heal our lands. God, we're standing on your promise right now in the name of Jesus. God, we bind uh, that coronavirus, we bind it right now. We bind it in the name of Jesus. God, we are putting blood on our doorposts that that thing will pass over our homes right now in the name of Jesus. God, move fear out of our mouths and out of our minds and out of our hearts right now and replace it with love. Replace it with strength. Replace it with encouragement. Replace it with the things that you have instilled upon us. God, that we trust wholly in you, solely in you, in the name of Jesus. Now, God, we ask that you Forgive us for anything that we've done that did not bring glory or honor to your name. We surrender our hearts and our wills to you right now, knowing that you are God that is faithful and just to forgive us for all of our sins and to cleanse us from all our unrighteousness. God, as we end this prayer, we ask that we don't leave your presence, but surround us with your heavenly angels. Some looking in to minister to our hurts, our needs, and our desires, and others looking out to lead us guide us and to protect us. Keep us in the center of your will, in the hollows of your hand, and close to your breast. And we'll be ever so careful in all that we do to give you the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God and amen. Psalms 103, verses one through five. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh, my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your inequities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagle. Reading Philippians 3, chapter 3, verse 12 through 16. Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Jesus Christ. Let us therefore as many as be perfect, but thus minded. And if anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Nevertheless, whereto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule, 
let us mind the same thing. God bless you all. We would like to welcome you to Solid Rock Church. We are so grateful that you are here with us today. And I would just like to extend to you a hearty welcome and let you know that God loves you so very much. So I'm encouraging you today to trust God in all that you do. Trust him and believe that he is going to bring us through this. We love you all. And again, I just want to thank you so much for joining us today.
Praise the Lord. God bless. Greetings to all of our Solid Rock saints at home in this perilous time. Asking everyone if you would open your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 6. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you right now for blessing us to be here. Thank you, Lord, for your protection. Anoint these lips of clay that they may speak your word and write it upon the tables of our heart that we may walk in your will and not sin against you. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Before I begin, Hebrews 12 and 14 says, Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no one, no man, shall see the Lord. It is imperative to our soul's salvation that we understand that God is holy. Psalm 99 and 9 says, The Lord our God is holy. Scriptures teach that God is intrinsically holy. But what does that mean? It means that the holiness of God is His quality of perfection in all His being and existence. And we need to understand that in God, perfection is not a modifying description of the manner in which God's attributes function, but is itself an aspect of the essence of His being. God is intrinsically holy. Holiness is God's very nature. God is holiness itself. This means that when we reject holiness, we have rejected God. Because when we have a choice between what is holy and something less than holy, and we choose what is less than holy, we have rejected holiness in favor of that which is less than holy. We have rejected and chosen to reject holiness. Because God is holiness, when we reject holiness, we have rejected God. Let me repeat that. Because God is holiness, when we reject holiness, we have rejected God. No wonder holiness is so important to God. We need to remember that the next time we're tempted to sin. Amen. If you look in your Bibles to, at the book of Ephesians, a main text, is the 6th chapter, verses 10 through 17. And among the epistles written by Paul, Ephesians is unique because it is not focused on spiritual problems, leadership issues, or controversies in the church as many of Paul's other letters are. Paul wrote Ephesians while in prison for preaching the gospel. There are six chapters, and the first three chapters focus on how we are saved, while the last three focus on how we are to continue to live after we're saved. And Paul tells us in Ephesians that Christians are called to live a new life of moral and spiritual purity, separation from the ungodly practices of the world, and devotion to God's purposes. Ephesians 1 and 4 calls us to be holy and without blame before Him. 2.21, we are to grow unto a holy temple under the Lord. 4 and 1 says, we are to walk worthily of the vocation wherewith we are called. 5 and 2, walk in love. 5.26, be holy by the washing of water by the word of God. And then the 27th verse of the 5th chapter tells us the reason is because we are to live like this so that Christ may have a church not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. From chapter 5, 22 to 6 and 9, Christians are called to a new way of life in personal, family, social, and work relationships that are to be guided by principles that mark believers as distinctly different from the worldly societies in which they live. And in chapter 6 
verse 10, Paul says, finally, finally, believers are called to stand against all the devil's diabolical schemes and spiritual wickedness in high places. I want you to notice that when God's word repeats a command, because every command of God is important, but when God repeats a command, it's very important. When God repeats it three times, it's extremely important. But when God repeats it four times, it's beyond extreme. It's life and death important. Looking at our text at 6 and 10, it reads, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. We are not called to be weak, stumbling, powerless Christians. We are called to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. It reads in the scriptures, it says, Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Underline in your Bibles, put on the whole armor of God. This is a command. What does that mean? It means we don't automatically have the armor just because you accepted Christ as your Lord. If you don't put on the armor of God today, then you do not have the armor of God on. What does this mean? It means that every day I have to purposely choose to walk with God. Because if I don't purposely choose every day to walk with God, guess who I'm going to walk for? The flesh, the world, and the devil. The three great enemies. Now, why put on the armor? That he may be able to stand against the wiles, the diabolical schemes of the devil. Underline the word stand. For we, the scripture says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. You see, our battle is not against the natural. It's not against the political powers and politicians. It's not even against the coronavirus. Our battle is spiritual. The natural things are affected by the spiritual, but it's the spiritual where the real battle begins. Against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places, that is, in the spiritual realm. Reading the word, it says, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. This is the second time this command is repeated. Underline it again. It's very important. Why? That ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. Underline withstand. This is the second time stand is repeated. In the evil day. When trouble comes your way. And having done all to stand. The third time stand is repeated. Stand therefore, the text reads. The fourth time stand is repeated. So that stand is beyond extremely important. It's life and death important. You've got to be able to stand. And in order to stand... You have to have your loins girded about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. You have to put on both truth and righteousness. Truth is what holds everything else in place. On the Roman soldier, leather straps were attached to the belt that kept the breastplate from flopping around. If your righteousness is flopping, the enemy can slip in a dagger and kill your spiritual life. The Bible says, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. And some people want to put on the helmet of salvation, but they don't want to put on righteousness. They don't want to live holy. 
But a wound to the heart is just as deadly as a wound to the head. You need both the helmet and the breastplate. And your feet, your feet enable you to stand, also to go forward. Being able to stand is repeated four times in our text. So the importance of what goes on your feet is beyond extreme. It is life and death important because in hand-to-hand -hand combat, it, the goal was to get the opponent off his feet, putting him in a vulnerable position to take his life. It doesn't matter what weapons you have if you trip. Anyone ever trip holding stuff in their hands? Everything goes flying. Helmet flies off. Sword goes one way, shield the other. You must be able to stand. It is life and death important. And in order to stand, your feet must be shod. Shod means to make ready. 1 Peter 3.15 says, Be ready always to give an answer to every man who asketh you a reason for the hope that is in you. The readiness of mind that comes from the preparation, the scripture says. You're ready because you've been prepared. You've been trained. You've practiced and prepared. And what are you ready and prepared for? The gospel of peace, the scripture says. Isaiah 52 and 7 says, How beautiful are the, the mountains on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good tidings, who proclaim peace, who bring, proclaim salvation. Paul said it again in Romans 10, 15. How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good tidings, good news. The military command in Luke 4, 23 is go out to the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be full. We move forward proclaiming the good news, but you can't share the good news with others if you haven't been strapped up with the good news, equipped and prepared to share the good news as shoes for your feet. The gospel of peace not only helps us move forward, but it also helps us stand firm when we are attacked by the enemy. There will be times in your faith in Christ and your obedience to Christ to carry out the mission of Christ when you'll be attacked. By putting on the shoes for your feet, the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace, you are enabled by the power of the Holy Ghost, by the power of His might, to stand firm in the midst of battle. But how many have been AWOL because they have not put on the shoes with the preparation of the gospel? How many of you are missing in action because you have no shoes? You need to put on your shoes and stop tripping. The Romans had shoes like no one else at the time, called the Caligae. The Roman Caligae had extremely tough soles, thickly studded with metal spikes in order to have secure grip on the ground. The purpose was to maintain a solid footing and to be ready for action. Historically, far more soldiers have gone down in battle for foot problems than have gone down from bullets. Without shoes, you cannot stand against the diabolical schemes of the devil. Without shoes, how are you going to stand against the devil when you're slipping and tripping? Without shoes, how are you going to be able to walk over life's difficulties? How are you going to run over rough roads of life's troubles with no shoes? In order to get a firm footing on the slippery battleground of life in this world, you need to put on your shoes and stop tripping. Amen. God has provided you with shoes to help you stand your ground. But 
These are not the leisurely shoes of the world or the lounging shoes of the slothful. These are the combat shoes by which the Christian soldier is enabled to stand firm against the flesh, the world, and against the devil. With what do we put on as shoes to stand firm? Paul says we put on as shoes the preparation of the gospel of peace. Put on your shoes and stop tripping. God has been speaking to our pastor and speaking to us through Pastor Simpkins. When I was scheduled to preach two weeks ago, the Holy Ghost took over and came upon Pastor and God spoke to him through and spoke to us through our pastor and told us that we've been AWOL, absent without leave, MIA, missing in action because we've been tripping. God told me to tell you today to put on your shoes and stop tripping. Scripture says, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Because the Christian life is not lived on a playground. It's lived on a battlefield. But the weapons of our warfare, which are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, are not going to be effective when we're tripping. God told me to tell you today, put on your shoes and stop tripping. It's important that you understand today that this word is from the Lord. I'm just the mailman. About a month ago, the Lord woke me up out of my sleep in the midst of the night and told me to preach this and showed me a vision of a military campaign. In the vision, God showed me that the commander had, as in Ephesians 4 and 11, given some generals and some colonels and some majors and some captains and lieutenants for the training of the soldiers to accomplish the mission of setting the prisoners free from the captivity of the enemy. That was the mission and that is our mission. Every soldier was given his assignment each soldier was assigned a position in order to take out the enemy at his position. Now, it is critical for the mission that every soldier carry out his assignment because if he's AWOL or missing in action, then the enemy at that position would team up against a fellow soldier and stop him from advancing. And the mission would be lost. Souls would be lost. No wonder churches are struggling and souls are being lost. It's because the soldiers are AWOL and MIA missing in action. Jesus said the harvest is plentiful but the laborers are few. They're missing in action. The commander was watching this battle with his binoculars and saw that his soldiers could not advance the mission because they were being teamed up against by the enemy. And the reason was because the other soldiers were not in their assigned positions. They were AWOL and missing in action. And he saw that whenever they tried to run to their assigned position, they kept tripping. When they tried to walk, they kept tripping. They couldn't even stand their ground without tripping. They had no power against the enemy, and their weapons were not effective because all the enemy had to do was toss a little difficulty in their path and knock them off their feet. All the devil had to do was toss some coronavirus in the way, and they started tripping. All the devil had to do was toss temptation in the way, and they're tripping. Family problems, and they're tripping. Money problems, and they're tripping. Any kind of problem, and they're tripping. Because your feet are not ready to go with the preparation of the gospel into the highways and hedges. You have no power. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, the word says. But ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses. How beautiful are the feet 
of those who bring good news. Go out into the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in so that my house may be full. Put on your shoes and stop tripping. Wow, what a word we just heard. Having our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace is what the Lord requires of all of us. That word was so powerful and I'm sure that it ministered to the heart of a lot of you at home today. Let me just say this. If you don't know the Lord as your personal Lord and Savior, this is a great time to get that accomplished, to make that take place. All you have to do is say what I'm going to say. Now, the Bible says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. And so let me just ask you to say this from your heart, but through your mouth. Repeat after me, Lord Jesus, I am so sorry for everything I've done wrong. Forgive me, Lord. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. I receive you now. And by faith, I am saved. Praise God. If you prayed that simple prayer with me and you believe it, then you are saved. You are a new creation in Christ Jesus. Let me encourage you to come on our uh, Zoom, our chat line, and let us know that God changed your life today. Praise God for you. Again, you might be able to sow into ministry, those of you who are listening, sow into ministry through Givelify, G-I-V-E-L-I-F-Y. You can locate the Solid Rock Church of God in Christ, and you can give right there with your credit card or debit card. Additionally, you can sow into ministry with checks or cash by mailing to Solid Rock Church, 5970 Thornton Avenue, Newark, California, 94560. That's 5970 Thornton Avenue, Newark, California, 94560. Thank you again so much for joining us today. We pray that the Lord blesses you continually throughout the rest of the week. Till we meet again. Truly knows how good God has been to you. We're gonna take it back one time.